We cannot talk about the first Chimurenga without talking about events that led up to it. Starting with the dubious Rad concession. I'll leave a link to that video above if you're interested. After Cecil John Rhodes and the British South Africa Company had tricked his way into Mashonaland, it was clear to them that carrying out any business in the new territory was going to be difficult, as long as the powerful king of the Ndebele, Lobengula, who still ruled the Matebeleland region, was around. Likewise, Lobengula, being the master war tactician he was, knew that the settlers were spoiling for a fight, which is why he gave instructions to his warriors that anyone who would kill a single settler during the raids into Mashonaland, all the warriors would also be killed by Lobengula. But there was one problem, the raids themselves. For Lobengula, it had become a useful habit of getting easy resources from Mashonaland. And from 1891 and 1892, he managed to steer clear of the settlers for the Shona, who had been paying tribute to Lobengula, this was now unnecessary, since they also had the settlers to contend with. And for the settlers, this had become a huge nuisance to their operations. Though it is claimed that Cecil John Rhodes, who was Prime Minister of the Cape Colony, and Leander Starr Jameson, the administrator of Mashonaland, tried to avoid war to prevent loss of confidence in the future of the territory. The company in Lobengula were on a collision course. Matters came to a head when Lobengula approved a raid to forcibly extract tribute from a Mashona chief in the district town of Fort Victoria, now Mashingo, which inevitably led to a clash with the company. In 1893, a chief in the Victoria district, today's Mashingo, named Gomara, refused to pay tribute to Lobengula asserting that he was now under the protection of the laws of the settlers. This response did not go down well with Lobengula, who in response sent a raiding party of several thousand warriors to bring Gomara to order. Lobengula's raiding party destroyed several villages and murdered many inhabitants. However, local British South Africa company administration felt that they had to intervene to avoid losing the confidence of the local people who complained that they were not being given any support against the raid. As a result, the company officials demanded from the Ndebele raiders that they leave immediately. The Ndebele refused. The settler forces attacked. In the altercation, 14 Ndebele warriors were killed. And since an order had been given by Lobengula for them not to kill a single settler, they withdrew. The settlers, led by Leander Starr, Jameson, for two months started planning for a full-on invasion of Matebili land. Jameson and Rhodes, who was in Cape Town, considered how they would amass enough troops to undertake the invasion. On the 16th of October, 1893, the British South Africa police columns rode from Fort Salisbury, which is modern-day Harare, and Fort Victoria, modern-day Mashingo, and combined at Iron Mine Hill around the center point of the country. Together, the force totaled around 700 men, commanded by Major Patrick Forbes and equipped with five Maxim machine guns. Forbes' combined column moved on the king's capital, Edbulawayo, to the southwest. Rhodes also mobilized an additional 700 Tswana forces under their leader, Kama III, who marched on Bulawayo. Kama III had allied himself with Cecil John Rhodes and was a staunch ally of the British. Kama III was the most influential of the Bamangwato chiefs of Botswana. The Ndebele warriors mobilized to prevent Forbes reaching the city and twice engaged the column as it approached. On 25 October, 3,500 warriors attacked the British South Africa Company column near the Shangani River. After the battle ended, the Ndebele warriors withdrew. They had suffered around 1,500 fatalities largely due to the Maxim machine guns that the British South Africa company were using. This was the first time this kind of weapon had been used in active combat by the British South Africa police. On the other hand, the company lost four men. A week later, on 1 November, 2,000 Debele riflemen and 4,000 warriors attacked Forbes at Bembesi, about 50 kilometers northeast of Ulawayo. But again, 
they were overwhelmed by the Maxim machine guns. About 2,500 more Ndebele warriors were killed. As news of this defeat filtered to Lobengula, he fled Bulawayo. In keeping with traditional custom, he and his subject touched the royal town as they went, including the city's large store of ivory, gold and other treasures, and its ammunition magazine exploded. When the company forces reached Bulawayo the next day, the flames were still rising. The British set up base in white man's camp already present and nailed the company flag and Union Jack to a tree. On 3 November, Blawayo was reached by the Victoria Column from Ashonaland, accompanied by Jemison and Sir Willoughby. By this time, Lobengula and his warriors were in full flight towards the Zambezi. An attempt was made to induce Lobengula to surrender, but no replies were received to the messages. The United Salisbury Column later arrived in Bulawayo on the 13th of November. Major Patrick Forbes organized his column and started in pursuit of Lobengula. Forbes' pursuing party could not catch up with Lobengula due to navigation and weather until December 3, 1893. Major Alan Wilson, in command of 34 troopers known as the Shangani Patrol, crossed the Shangani River and underestimated Lobengula's capabilities and camped close to Lobengula's quarters. In the night, the river rose, and early the next morning, the Ndebele warriors surrounded the Shangani patrol, overwhelming Wilson and his followers. 34 men of the Shangani patrol perished in the encounter. Only three managed to escape. American scouts, Frederick Russell Burnham, Pearl Pete Ingram, and an Australian, Gooding, who managed to cross the swollen river under the orders from Wilson and returned to Forbes to request reinforcements. However, Forbes' forces were unable to cross the river in time. The Ndebele king, Lobengula, is believed to have died from smallpox on January 22 or 23, 1894. Following the death of the king, the Ndebele Izinduna made peace with the British South Africa Company. For the settlers, peace in the new territory had been achieved for the meantime. In the years that followed, great activity in exploiting Matebele land, with stands and plots were being sold at extraordinary prices, and over 2,000 more prospectors in the various gold fields. The new territory was officially named Rhodesia on May 3, 1895.